Now, how was it being on on uh, on assistance as as a father? Like, what I'm asking is, um, what, what was it? Cha- was it challenging for you as a father to get on assistance? You mean as far as getting it? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, that was the second time I was on. I was on one time in 2001. Okay, because I was going through this stressful time. And I, I got uh, what they call reactive arthritis. Man, I couldn't hardly really walk, and and I couldn't hardly really work. I mean, the pain was so bad. I had to take these narcotics, and I was able to get on it then. But the only reason I bring this up to tell you why, how 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 it was easy to get on it the second time, because the first time I wouldn't have got on it had not one of the social workers lied. Because if you've worked steady, you can't get on it, right? Because you have a past income. Now, the reason I was able to get on it easy the second time when I came back is because out of the country for six years, I had no record of any employment. So it was easy. I just went down there and signed up with the kids and they gave me like a thousand dollars a month and six or seven hundred dollars cash. So that was I never used all that food money. I, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was easy to get on the second time because I had no history of work. So what I'm what I'm experiencing or what I experienced is. If you don't work at all, you can get on it. But if you're a hardworking guy and you have an income and you have some a tragedy or something happens, you can't get on it because you have a history of you have to not work for a year or two. So, yeah, the second time it was easy, like I said, because I came from out of the country. I had no record of employment. The first time, the only reason I got on it because a social worker was dishonest about the form and got us on there. But so that's kind of how it was. Got it. Got it. Understood. Okay. All right. So now, um, so now, what was uh, the, some of the pitfalls and challenges? And, and I guess this should more or less kind of go for for the older kids because the younger kids are primarily raised in the United States, right? Yeah. So yeah. So 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 for the guys that are on my right side, uh, the the older ones. So what what were some pitfalls uh, reacclimating yourself to the United States? Um. <sighs> One of the biggest ones was probably just um, school. School was just, I mean, it was just weird how it was set up, you know. And uh, the first couple grades in Guatemala, they teach you, the first grade, I know they teach you manners and when you're down there. So they teach you manners. And then second grade, they start teaching you the, uh, start teaching you more of like, I think it's like the adding and subtracting and stuff. Well, then we came up here and by third grade, they're already doing division. And I'm like, I'm like two or three years behind on that already. But um, another thing was immediately whenever I was introduced to school, I was introduced as a foreigner. So everybody treated me different. Everybody was just like, oh, yeah, that's the kid from Guatemala. That's the kid from Guatemala. Let me interrupt. Isn't that strange? You were down there. He was down there and he was a gringo. And then he comes up. (laughs) Now I'm a Hispanic guy. So that was like, and what was weird about it was my third grade teacher, she actually had taken all the Hispanic kids. And sat them all in a corner of the of the classroom and stuck me there with them because she understood she'd kind of figured that I couldn't speak English. Now, when I first got into class and I'm like, hey, everybody, they're like, he speaks English. I'm like, yeah, speaking <laughs> is not the best, you know. So it was that. And then um, I don't know. I mean, I got I got around pretty good. It wasn't necessarily too hard. I guess really one of the things getting used to was, you know, having it was strange to just have constantly have food never run out of food you know never not have something to eat so that was something there too um you know we in guatemala we played outside you know we just had to get used to uh having stuff without it letting letting it go to our heads that was the main thing it was pretty much like just i'm like okay so i have all this stuff and i know my dad works for it and everything so i just i I have to appreciate it so we just it was just strange just completely changing our lives literally from li- living in like a rainforest to come in and live in like a city. And then your local supermarket is the size of the biggest mall that they have down there. So, I mean, I made a lot of friends. Uh, there was a lot of, there's a lot of Hispanic people in this town, which we got really lucky. And it's funny because one of the guys that was, I was best friends with, we ended up moving into his neighborhood and his neighborhood is actually full of it's, th- it's this neighborhood that we live in now. And it's actually mainly Hispanics. So, you know, for the first few years, it was kind of strange. You know, we had it was just hot water, you know, having our toys, having food, you know, having everything that we needed and then going to school. And then, um, you know, how everybody lines up and goes to lunch and everything. It was just the smallest things were actually probably the 
the more challenging things to try to get used to, you know, and then um, English too, on top of that, trying to learn English, that was literally the hardest thing because I mean, trying to learn English from any other language I can guarantee is painful. And it was for us, you know, just trying to figure out how this language worked fully. We spoke it, we just didn't know how to read it or write it correctly and everything. So that was reading, writing and school. School was really the the probably the most challenging part. And it wasn't the people, but it was like the curriculum that we were being taught and then sitting there for so long, you know, you don't, you know, you just get I just got bored and tired of school pretty fairly quickly and everything. And you know, just not having mom around, it was like I rebelled against all the teachers because I had all female teachers. So because I didn't have mom around, I had, had assumed that every other woman was like that too. So I give all my teachers a really, really hard time. Now, granted, I have two or three teachers that I see to this day and oh, you're such a good kid. And stuff. I'm like, the last I remember I was, you know, I was a knucklehead, but for the most part, school was really the, the, the most challenging, difficult part. Well, I'll say this. The only time they ever went without food was when I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I didn't give them money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did not them. I gave money to your mother. Mm -hmm. But typically went towards clothes and her fashion <laughs> kind of stuff. You know, I mean, we just we we were used to that, though. You know what I mean? So but down there, that's a common thing that the, the parents eat first, mm -hmm. not the kids. We're up here We it's almost like the kids get thought of first before the parents yeah. it's just kind of backwards and the reason i think that is is because without the children to support the parents when they get older they have no structures or systems like we have social security they don't have that down they depend on the children so the, the parents are taken care of first and then the children second mm -hmm. yeah um, that's interesting yeah no you're definitely you're definitely right about that uh you know here in the united states like when you put food out or whatever, like it's typically the kids eat first, right? Because in the culture in the United States, like if the adults eat first, like it's it's so frowned upon. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So so um, so er anyone else want to talk about um, their their adjustments as far uh, from relocating from Latin America to the United States? Yeah, like uh, my brother said. Yeah, going to school and learning. Uh, English, especially for me, because I was so young. I, I spoke mainly Spanish when I first came up. Mm -hmm. And when I first came to school, I was in kindergarten. And uh, I remember learning like the ABCs and stuff like that. And I didn't know how to say any of those letters. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know? And uh, I remember when I was in kindergarten, I came home from school one day and I learned how to count to 100. And I was laying next to my dad and I was counting. He just, he's like, go to bed, go to bed. You know, I was pretty excited. <laughs> Down to 100. <laughs> Another thing, too, was uh, when we lived at my grandma's house, I would get lost, even though it wasn't really big at all, but it was just so different than houses down there. Yeah. Like it had carpet and different hallways. Rooms. You guys had dirt floors where you, with yeah. Your yeah. Mom. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like, your mom. Oh, we were the richest in the neighborhood because yeah. we actually ended up getting concrete oh, on the floor. Yeah. So we were fancy. And it was just, yeah, it was difficult, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to live in a house that's actually a real home, you know, and then down there, too. Mm -hmm you're not as supervised as much as we were up here. And I remember a couple of times I'd be sitting out in the driveway at our grandma's house and I'd be doing bad things like sticking my middle finger out or I'd be going outside to pee, even though there's a bathroom and stuff. <laughs> and my dad had to teach us all that. You know, you can't, you know, be sticking your middle finger out or cussing or doing all this stuff. And yeah, there's yeah. nothing inside that you can use. You don't have to pee outside, you know, yeah, down there. They just pee wherever. everywhere, yeah, yeah. everywhere and anywhere. I guess they still do. But I remember I was, not shocked, but surprised you drive down the road and even the women would squat down around the side mm -hmm. of the road. And, but there's no bathroom for them to use anywhere. Yeah, no public access like that. Like right. Here. Unless you're eating in a restaurant, you can't use bathrooms down there. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, okay. 